Well, hello, and welcome to day 17 of uh, reading Acts in January. <clears throat> I'm Pastor Rick Williams at Zion Lutheran Church. Thanks for joining me today. Um, yeah, it's been a pretty exciting journey to this part, traveling with Peter and James and John and Paul and Silas and all of the other apostles as they begin to spread the news of the gospel throughout the known world. Um, in chapter 16 yesterday, we saw Timothy join up with, with Paul and Silas. They, they got the call to go to Macedonia. Um, they converted the, the uh, lady uh, Lydia, the seller of fine purple goods. Um, what a lot of people don't realize is purple was one of the hardest colors to dye. It was the color of royalty. And uh, odds are that Lydia was a pretty wealthy lady because of, of her business and dealing in those purple goods. Um, and we see her and her entire family joining the church. And then we see them go to Philippi. Um, Philippi is where Paul will later write the letters to the Philippians. Um, but while they're in Philippi, they got thrown in jail. Um, there was the earthquake that set them free. The jailer was going to kill himself because he figured all his prisoners escaped. And that's when Paul and Silas went, no, 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 we're still here. We didn't leave. And he couldn't understand why they didn't leave. So they taught him, the, you know, explained the gospel to him. And he and his whole family were converted. And then they, they let Paul and Silas go because they found out they had wrongly imprisoned some Roman citizens. So uh, Paul and Silas are back on the road. And that's where we pick up with them today in chapter 17 as Paul and Silas head to Thessalonica. And you know what I'm going to do before we start here? I should have done it before I clicked record is I'm going to clean my glasses a little bit. My wife always wonders how I can see out of them. They're kind of dirty. They spend half their lifetime on my forehead. So there. All right. So anyway, as I said, chapter 17, we're going to see Paul and Silas heading into Thessalonica, among other places. Now, when they passed through Amphilus and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul went in, as was his custom, and on three Sabbath days he reasoned with them from the Scriptures, explaining and proving that it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead, and saying, This Jesus, whom I proclaim to you, is the Christ. And some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a great many of the devout Greeks, and not a few of the leading women. But the Jews were jealous, and taking some wicked men of the rabble, they formed a mob. They set the city in an uproar and attacked the house of Jason, seeking to bring them out to the crowd. And when they could not find them, they dragged Jason and some of the brothers before the city authorities, shouting, These men who have turned the world upside down have come here also, and Jason has received them, and they are all acting against the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, Jesus. And the people and the city authorities were disturbed when they heard these things. And when they had taken money as security from Jason and the rest, they let them go. The brothers immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. And when they arrived, they went into the Jewish synagogue. Now these Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the word with all eagerness examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Many of them therefore believed, with not a few Greek women of high standing as well as men. But when the Jews from Thessalonica learned that the word of God was proclaimed by Paul at Berea, also they came there too, agitating and stirring up the crowds. Then the brothers immediately sent Paul off on his way to the sea. But Silas and Timothy remained there. Those who conducted Paul brought him as far as Athens. And after receiving a command for Silas and Timothy to come to him as soon as possible, they departed. Now while Paul was waiting for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him as he saw the city was full of idols. 
So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jew, Jews and the devout persons, and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also conversed with him. And some, some said, Why does this, what does this babbler wish to say? Others said, He seems to be a preacher of foreign divinities because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and they brought him to the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? For you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, what these things mean. Now all Athens and the foreigners who lived there would spend their time in nothing except telling and hearing of something new. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For I passed along and observed the objects of your worship. And I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God in the hope that they might feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. And even some of your own poets have said, For we are indeed his offspring. Being the God's offspring, we ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Now when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, but others said, We will hear you again about this. So Paul went out from their midst, but some men joined him and believed. Among them were Diocinius and Arapagati and a woman named Damaris and others with them. So there, that's chapter 17. Once again, Paul and the crew out preaching the gospel. Um, once again, we see the hard-heartedness and the stubbornness of the Jews and the jealousy of the Jews. When Paul and Silas start making inroads, especially because they're using the synagogue to do their preaching, when they see their fellow Jews falling into Christianity, they become jealous. And that's when they start stirring people up against Paul and Silas. And that's why they are constantly on the move from Thessalonica to Berea and then to Athens. But we also see Paul reasoning with the Athenians, <coughs> which is pretty amazing in itself. And I love the section where he talks about their inscription on the altar or to the temple of the unknown God. He said, you call him unknown. Uh, I know who he is, and I can tell you who he is, and here's what he's done. And this is the part that I think um, is important to remember. And it's important for all the people in the world, both in Paul's time and in ours. It says, the times of ignorance, in the times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And on this he has given assurance to all 
by raising him from the dead. Jesus is that man, both man and God. Christ raised, or God raised Christ from the dead as a sign to show us that he was indeed his chosen, that he had fulfilled the commands of God, and then he will come again in judgment. Um, there's a lot of people in this world that don't think they're going to be judged. They don't believe in the ultimate judge, but the day will come when all will be judged. And every knee shall bow and every mouth shall profess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Whether you believed or not, you're going to see it, you're going to know it. I think we're much better off to be on the side that we're on when that day comes. But that's why it's also upon us to share that message so as many as possible can be saved. Christ's forgiveness is for everyone. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For he did not send him into the world to condemn the world but to save the world. And we're here, part of our responsibility because of our salvation is to share that message. So we, like Paul, like Silas, like Timothy, like all of these others, we need to share that gospel message. It's not always well received. You know, I mean, look, Paul's basically been thrown out of every town in Asia. They had to kick him all the way over to Greece just to find a place where people weren't beating on him. Why? Because he was delivering the message that people didn't necessarily want to hear. We, too, have to be prepared to deliver the message that not everyone wants to hear. So anyway, um, that's it for Chapter 17. I hope you enjoyed our reading today. I hope you'll join me tomorrow for Chapter 18. Um, in Chapter 18, Paul heads off to Corinth, and Corinth was quite a spot. So uh, we're going to hear about Paul's adventures to Corinth and uh, his continuing efforts to spread the gospel. So anyway, thanks for joining me today. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I hope things are going really well for you. Um, yeah, be happy, be healthy, be kind, be faithful, be safe out there. Love the Lord and share his message with everyone around you. And I hope that we all get to see each other face to face again real soon. Take care and God bless.